Good morning, boys and girls. Welcome back to another week of FKBC Kids Online. My name is Pastor Daniel, and I am so blessed to get to be y'all's pastor and to get to spend time with you all each week. I miss each and every one of you terribly, but I'm so looking forward to seeing you all sooner than later. That being said, boys and girls, we are going to start the same way we start out our time together every single week. We are going to pray. So let's bow our heads and close our eyes and we will go to God in prayer. Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, first of all, you are the king and creator over all things. Father God, you made the sun, the moon, the stars, and everything that is in the earth. You are the ultimate creator, and so you are worthy of us coming together to bring you praise. You're worthy of our time and of our focus. Father God, you are worthy of our praise. And so we come together now to bring glory to your name. We confess our sins this morning. We know that your word says that all have sinned and fallen short of your glory. We also know your word tells us that there is a way that seems right to people, but in the end it leads to death. So we know that we all have sin in our lives, but we ask that you would forgive us of our sins, help us to turn away from sin. Send your Holy Spirit to help us to go and sin no more. Father God, we thank you for keeping our friends and our family safe during this time. We ask that you would continue to protect us, continue to teach us, lead us, and guide us according to your wisdom and your faith. Father God, we thank you for all of your missionaries you have serving all over the world. We pray especially for the nation of the Philippines this morning. We pray for Freedom in Christ Church and Dismo Community Church. We pray for their pastors, their leaders, their communities, their kids. We ask that you send your Holy Spirit to continue to lead them, guide them, grow them in accordance to your will. So Father God, we place this service in your hands. We ask that you would open our eyes and our ears and our hearts and our minds to receive your word. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Okay, so boys and girls, last week we finished up unit 15. Oh my goodness, I can't believe how far you all have gotten. And so last week we talked about God's prophet of hope. Do you remember who that was? Ezekiel. And we talked about how the southern kingdom of Judah had gone into exile at the hands of the Babylonians and how God used his prophet Ezekiel to remind his people that he had not given up on them. He used his prophet Ezekiel to remind his people that he was still their God. How amazing is that. And so, boys and girls, as we move on to Unit 16, we have a brand new big picture memory verse. And this one comes from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 through 18. That's 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 through 18. And it says, we can read together, Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Let's say that one more time together, boys and girls. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. How awesome is that? So with our new unit, unit 16, and our new big picture memory verse, we have a new big picture question. And as we hear these different Bible stories, we will answer this very important big picture question. And that question is, why do we pray? Why do we pray? So that's a really good question. And sometimes, you know, we pray before dinner or we pray right before bedtime. And we pray because we just know it's something that we should do. But I wonder, boys and girls, have you ever really thought about why you pray? 
Well, throughout our Bible stories in Unit 16, we're going to explore the answer to that. And the answer to the big picture question is, we pray because we trust God and we know that he hears us. We pray because we trust God and we know that he hears us. How awesome is that? And so in the story that we're going to learn about today, boys and girls, we are going to learn about the fiery furnace. And if you want to follow along, you should have your Bibles with you. We will be in the book of Daniel. Yeah, I know, kind of like Pastor Daniel. We'll be in the book of Daniel in chapter 3. The book of Daniel beginning in chapter 3 if you want to follow along. And so we know that the Bible is full of stories about things that happened a long time ago. And all of these different stories from the Bible fit in to one big story or one big theme of the Bible. And that theme is of how God rescues sinners like us through his son, Jesus. And so over the next few weeks, we're going to learn all about God's people who are living in exile right? The southern kingdom of Judah had been captured by the Babylonians, and God used faithful people, right, his prophets, to continue his plan to provide salvation to his people through Christ Jesus. And so I want you to think about all those things as you check out your Bible story video for today. So check out your video. Nebuchadnezzar was the king of Babylon. One day, Nebuchadnezzar made a tall gold statue. His official made an announcement for all the people of Babylon. When you hear music, you must fall down and worship this statue. Anyone who does not obey this rule will be thrown into a fiery furnace. So when the people heard music, they fell down and worshiped the gold statue like the king commanded. But not everyone bowed down and worshiped the statue. Three friends from Judah, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, refused to bow down to a statue. Some men complained to King Nebuchadnezzar. You made a rule for all the people, they reminded the king. But some of the men from Judah do not bow down and worship your statue. This news made King Nebuchadnezzar angry. He called for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Is it true that you do not serve my gods or worship the gold statue? He asked. If you do not bow down when you hear the music, I will throw you into a fiery furnace. Then what god could rescue you from my power? Three friends answered, King, the God we serve is able to rescue us from the fiery furnace. He can save us from you. But even if God chooses not to rescue us, we will not serve your gods. We will not bow down and worship the gold statue. King Nebuchadnezzar was even angrier. He made the fire even hotter and told some of his soldiers to tie up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then the soldiers threw the friends into the fiery furnace. Suddenly, King Nebuchadnezzar jumped up. Didn't we tie up three men and throw them into the fire? Look, the king shouted. <gasps> I see four men walking around in the fire. They aren't tied up, and the fourth man looks like a son of the gods. Nebuchadnezzar quickly went to the door of the furnace. He called out, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come here. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out of the fire. They had not been burnt by the fire at all. Their clothes did not even smell like smoke. <gasps> Nebuchadnezzar praised God. The God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego sent an angel and rescued his servants. 
King Nebuchadnezzar made a new law for all the people. Anyone who says anything against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego's God will be punished. No other God can save people like this. Then the king gave Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego important jobs in his kingdom. God was with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fire. Only he could rescue them. God rescues us too through his son, Jesus. Only Jesus can save us from our sin. Jesus' sacrifice on the cross provided the way for us to be rescued from sin and have eternal life. Wow, boys and girls, what an awesome Bible story. So I want to start off with a question for you. Why is it, do you think, that Nebuchadnezzar built that golden statue of himself? Why do you think he built a golden statue of himself? Well, I can tell you, boys and girls, King Nebuchadnezzar was prideful. King Nebuchadnezzar wanted the people of his kingdom to know that he ruled over them. In fact, Nebuchadnezzar even thought that he was more powerful than God. How crazy is that? And so when these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, refused to bow down and worship the statue, do you think that they believed that God would rescue them? Well, boys and girls, we can find the answer if you turn your Bibles to Daniel chapter 3, verse 16. We can read what the guys thought. It says, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to the king. They said to Nebuchadnezzar, they said, Nebuchadnezzar, we don't need to give you an answer to this question. If the God we serve exists, then he can rescue us from the furnace of blazing fire, and he can rescue us from the power of you, the king. But even if he does not rescue us, we want you as king to know we will not serve your gods or worship the golden statue you set up. You see, boys and girls, they were trusting God no matter what the circumstance, right? Even if something bad was going to happen, they trusted God. The men chose to trust that God's plan was the best plan for them, even if they had to face something really scary. And so do you remember our big picture question we asked, why do we pray? And it seems like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego knew the answer to this question. They prayed and we pray because we trust God and we know that he hears us. We pray because we trust God and we know that he hears us. And so one of the most incredible parts of this entire story is when King Nebuchadnezzar looks inside the fiery furnace and instead of seeing three men inside the furnace, it said that he saw four. You know, a lot of Bible scholars and pastors, they believe that the fourth person was either an angel of God or maybe even God the Son himself. At the end of the day, God delivered Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. How do you think King Nebuchadnezzar responded to God's rescuing of them? Well, boys and girls, we can find the answer once again in Scripture if you turn to Daniel chapter 3, verse 26. It says, Nebuchadnezzar then approached the door of the furnace of blazing fire, and he called Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, you servants of the Most High God, come out. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out of the fire. How incredible is that? Nebuchadnezzar was so astonished by what he saw that he recognized the power of the one true God. See, I imagine that Shadrach and Meshach felt like they were in a pretty hopeless place when they entered that furnace. 
You know, but God was with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, even in the fire. You know, there was nothing that they could do, right? Only God could rescue them in that moment. And it's crazy because God rescues us too. Through his son, Jesus, right? Only Jesus can save us from our sin, just like only God could have saved Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego from the fiery furnace. Christ's sacrifice on the cross provided the way for us to be rescued from sin and to have eternal life. And that's our big Christ connection that even as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego could only be rescued by God, it's the same with us in our sin. Only, we can only be rescued by Christ Jesus, by his life, death, and resurrection is the only way that we have been saved. And so I want to encourage you, boys and girls, as I encourage you at the end of all of our time together to live your life as kids on mission. Don't keep these things to yourself, but rather take this time as an opportunity when you see someone is in a situation that might seem really scary or they might seem worried or sad. You can tell them the story of the fiery furnace and about how God hears his people when they pray. You can tell them all about Christ Jesus and about how through Christ they can be a part of God's family and trust that God is in control no matter what the situation. So boys and girls, I encourage you to continue to live your life as kids on missions, to tell somebody the good news of the gospel. I cannot wait until I see you all again. We have big news coming out about Vacation Bible School. Also, all of the graduating fifth graders, we have some special stuff coming up for you all as well. We want to send you all off um, with just our Thanksgiving and lots of blessings. So look forward to that. Um, that being said, boys and girls, I'm going to pray for us and then we can uh, close all together. So let's bow our heads and close our eyes and pray. Father God, thank you for every single one of these individual students. I pray that um, the seeds of your gospel would take root in their hearts, that you would transform their minds by the reading of scripture, by the hearing of your word. Father God, I pray that you would continue to lead us and guide us, comfort us, um, help us to learn to trust you in all situations. Father God, um, I thank you for every single one of these students' lives. I pray that you would continue to raise them up as your servants and you would continue to use them for your will. So Father God, we love you, we praise you, we thank you for everything you've done, all the amazing things you're doing, and all of the plans that you have for us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, boys and girls, I will see you all next week. Bye. Hey there, I'm Pastor Brian, and it's time for questions from kids. Samuel from Kenmore, New York asks, I had a big science test, but I forgot to study. One of my friends offered to let me copy his answers. I didn't want to fail the test, but it didn't seem right. What should I have done? Samuel, that is a great question. And I think, you know, we've all been in a situation like that, where maybe we haven't studied because we forgot. Uh, maybe we just, you know, were distracted, or we did study, but we didn't feel prepared enough. And so it was so tempting just to kind of copy a few questions and, and you know, we, we feel like we, we know the information anyway, right? So what harm is it gonna do? It's not really cheating. And so we start to rationalize and we might wanna do what's wrong, but here's the big takeaway. It's never okay to do what's wrong. Uh, copying even one answer in a test is wrong. That would be sin and God does not want us to do that. Instead, he wants us to be people of integrity. Even in the small things that we think really don't matter, God wants us to follow Him, obey Him, and always do what's right. You know, we see that in today's Bible story, didn't we? Where we see these three friends, they had the choice to do what was wrong, and nobody would have known. Actually, they would have been praised for doing what's wrong, but they didn't. They did what's right. They honored God, and God blessed them because of that. Now, here's the thing. 
We need to always do what's right, have integrity in the small things and the big things, but we can't believe that God is always gonna bless us the way he did those three friends. There may be a time where we do what's right and we suffer because of it. And you know what? I would rather do that and know that I am pleasing God, that I'm glorifying God, even if something is difficult, than have a life that's easier and better and know that I'm displeasing God and not honoring Him. And so every time, big things, small things, we want to do what's right. We want to have integrity as people who follow Jesus. So I've got a question back for you. Can you think of a time when you chose to do the right thing even though it meant facing consequences?